Welcome back to Spellbound Sourdough. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cherry chocolate chunk sourdough loaf. Not only am I going to show you how to make this delicious loaf, but I'm also going to be giving you some tips and tricks along the way so that you can make better sourdough loaves. So first off, we're going to want to start with some fresh cherries. Those cherries need to be pitted and then I'm going to go ahead and blend them up. I do this so that I can add them to the dough mixture, which you'll see here in a second. Um, I also add some cherry extract and vanilla extract. Extracts are always kind of optional. Vanilla really enhances the flavor of other items, whereas cherry gives a more strong cherry flavor. So if you don't want a really intense cherry flavor and you want more of like a natural cherry flavor, you can just use the ground up cherries. So to that, I'm adding my warm water and I'm also adding my active starter. I'm giving that a good mix and then I'm adding in the flour. Once the flour is added in, I'm gonna go ahead and stir it as much as I can. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my hands and incorporate all of the dough. As you'll notice that this dough is pretty sticky and it's pretty wet. So we let that rest for about an hour, 35 minutes to an hour. And then I'm gonna go in and do my first coil fold. You can also do a stretch and fold if you'd like. Um, now, when I do this coil fold, you can see that the dough is kind of like falling apart it's not really put together so i am actually going to work this dough a lot more um, during this first coil fold and throughout all of my coil folds so that just means that i'm going to keep going around and i'm going to kind of do this slap and fold technique that's going to help build the gluten in the dough now don't ever feel like you have to do just a certain amount of stretch and fold stretch and folds are based on how your dough is at that moment so if your dough looks like it needs more strength thinning and more stretching go ahead and do another coil fold it doesn't matter if you're doing five or six that that sometimes that's a lot but sometimes that's needed so right now i'm just doing this and i'm only going to show you my first coil fold so it's not super repetitive but i did end up doing about four coil folds 30 minutes apart so every 30 minutes i went in and i did a coil fold and then i let it rest now bulk fermentation starts from the time that you mix all of your ingredients with your starter. So that is when you're going to determine when it starts. So this was resting at about 77 degrees, meaning I'm gonna be looking for about a 30% rise. And you'll notice that the top is domed, the bubbles are nice and shaped on the top, and it's not sticking to my finger when I do the poke test. Um, I'm using the sourdough journeys chart to determine when my bulk fermentation is ended. And I will go ahead and tag that creator below because I think that they have an amazing resource, um, amazing resources when it comes to bulk fermentation. So after the bulk fermentation is done, I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch out my dough. I'm gonna laminate it and I'm gonna just add my inclusions. Some people like to add their inclusions when they're mixing and that's totally fine as well. Sometimes I do that, but sometimes I don't. So this time I just decided to laminate them in. Now I decided to shape this into a bowl, so I'm just going to be doing um, a nice like pull and tuck. So I'm tucking upward and inward as much as I can with all of the inclusions. Then I'm sprinkling with the rice flour. I'm sticking it um, over top of a tea towel in my bowl, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch it as well as I can. Um, this just helps kind of like tighten up the dough so that I gives it a little bit better oven spring with inclusion sometimes it's a little difficult um, and then I'm going to wrap it up stick it in the fridge for about 12 to 48 hours as long as you'd like to ferment it and then once I'm ready to bake I am using purple sweet potato powder and pink vitaya powder and I'm kind of mixing them together to get this I was going for a cherry cola look um, and I think it turned out pretty well it does always bake off a little bit different obviously than when you put it on then I'm scoring it with my wire monkey scoring lame that I've cut to make it a little easier to do rounded um, scores I'm also going to show you guys how I open bake. So I have preheated my oven to 450 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and stick my loaf in my oven on a pizza stone. I already have a pan with lava rocks heating up in the oven. I'm just going to go ahead and pour some water over these. Be very careful. They are hot. Um, so just be aware. Wear some long gloves when you're doing this. I pour the water over top of them, stick them back in there, and then I also spray my loaves after I do this. I'm going to let them cook for about 25 minutes with steam. Steam is very important when open baking. It allows your loaf to rise and not crust over. Um, after 25 minutes, I remove the steam, spin the loaf, and cook it for an additional 10 to 15 minutes. And that's how you make the cherry chocolate chunk loaf.